In this tutorial, we're going to perform some very basic and useful tasks in QGIS. The layers we're going to use for this are all available on Natural Earth data. Uh, go to Downloads, Large Scale Data, Cultural, and download two layers from here, one for countries and one for populated places. Um, as always, keep all of your layers uh, in a single folder. Uh, because if you move them around, uh, you'll cause problems when you open your project in QGIS. Uh, we'll take the shapefile for the admin uh, countries dot SHP, SAP for shapefile, uh, drag it into QGIS, and we'll do the same for the populated places. Okay, now we have everything we need for today's tutorial. I'm going to turn off the populated places uh, first so that we can focus in on countries here. It gives you a random color when you open the layer. Uh, and uh, let's learn how to style a layer. Whenever you right click and choose properties, at the bottom of the contextual menu for the layer, you'll get a whole range of uh, different features available to you. Right now it's set for a simple fill. If I change that to the color white and press OK, we'll now have uh, an empty map. This layer contains a lot of other data for each country, uh, including the names, population, and uh, GDP. Uh, you can see this if you right-click on the layer and open the attribute table. And you can browse the columns here and make note of any interesting ones, like pop underscore est for population, GDP MD est, uh, which appears to be PPP GDP, not per capita or uh, the overall GDP as it's often listed. We also see that it has categories for income and a range of names in different languages. Okay. One of the things that you'll often find yourself doing is labeling things on the map. Although we probably wouldn't want to do this in any practical context for the entire world, but this can be done by going back into properties, choosing labels and single labels. Here you have to choose which column you wish to use as the label. Admin contains the English name of the country, uh, but so too does name underscore en. There are a number of other options down here, including the ability to set the font. I'm not going to worry about uh, downloading all of these fonts right now. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, buffer the labels. When you draw a buffer around it, it will, by default, put a white colored buffer uh, around the text itself so that if it overlaps with other data or a coastline, for example, it'll be easier to read the label in that case. Another thing you can do is uh, place something offset from whatever it is that you're labeling. This is more useful in the case of cities, for example. Uh, but if you wanted to label it to the top and right by a certain distance, uh, you can do so here. Right now, I'm just going to put around centroid. Uh, if I click apply and OK here, it'll redraw the map and add all of those labels like that. OK, that's a bit dense, uh, but more useful in the context of showing layers uh, at a uh, smaller scale, uh, sorry, a larger scale. So I'm going to turn off layers now for just a second, and let's go back to our original map. The next skill to learn is how to query or filter a map by its data if you only want to show certain things. Let's say, for example, that I would like to have a map that only shows me the countries of Egypt and uh, Yemen. To do so, you can go right-click and choose Filter, which will allow you to do a spatial query. This Query Builder window here gives you uh, the ability to put in a kind of an equation. Uh, and uh, here, for example, we can say, I know that admin contains the English name for a country. 
you can check that by sampling the contents of it. Uh, if I double click on that, it adds it down here. So if I type equals Egypt and test this, I get one. But we also want to show the country of Yemen. So if I add an or, and I can directly type this in instead of double clicking it if I want, and do this and test, we get two things returned. Uh, notice that it's double quotation marks for field names and single quotation marks for the contents of those fields. Uh, if I click OK now, you'll see that it only shows these two countries. I can always remove the filter again by just deleting this. And we could do the same thing by population. Let's say we only want to show countries that have more than a hundred million people. So if we go into pop est is greater than 100 million people. If we test that, we see that there are 13 countries matching that. Press OK. And there you go. We now are only looking at countries with, uh, with over 100 million. If, uh, if I remove that filter again, oops, I have a blank line there. OK, uh, let's do a simple choropleth map now. Uh, we know that there's data. Uh, we know that some of that data is quantitative. So what if we wanted to show uh, the world by population ranking? If we go into the properties for this layer and then into symbology, if you do a graduated symbol, and maybe let's do it by greens, on the column of population estimate, I'm going to choose quantile so that we get an equal number of countries uh, for each classify. So countries, there's an equal number of countries that have 0 to 70,000, as there are for some of these larger ones. Um, and I apply, press OK. Uh, we end up with something like this. But uh, what I think is happening is that a lot of smaller countries, island nations in particular, uh, are going to show uh, up as this light color and are not really visible. So there are cases where you might want to change the values. Let's say we want to go up to 1 million people. Here, and it automatically updated the next one there. Uh, there are methodological reasons why you wouldn't want to mess around with this kind of thing. Uh, but uh, just, just to show you that that's something you can do easily. Uh, looks like most countries have more than 1 million people, so we'd have to pick a larger number. Uh, but the colors you produce uh, are going to be very much dependent, obviously, on the distribution of your data, underlying data. Uh, we see that similarly if we were to create a graduated symbol map, uh, a choropleth map, on the basis not of population, but on GDP. If I classify this, apply, you'll see that we don't have a lot of countries with very low GDP because, again, um, it's overall GDP and a lot of the smaller countries that are island nations are not going to be listed. So what if we wanted to show the GDP per capita? To do this, uh, we can use this handy equation uh, possibility over here. If you click on that, and remember we had a population column. So if I tell it to produce a choropleth map on the basis of the GDP divided by the population, and while the legends is not going to be terribly useful uh, unless we were to multiply uh, that number, uh, uh, it'll still show us uh, a proper ranking. Okay. 
for whatever reason, the Antarctica is uh, being given a very high GDP per capita. I guess there's a lot of rich scientists down there. Uh, but this gives you uh, uh, a GDP per capita, which is a more useful uh, uh, choropleth map than just showing uh GDP overall, as uh, big countries will tend to have a larger GDP, and uh, this is done by uh, per person in the country. Um, but we noticed that there was another way that we could show similar kind of data. Do you remember that there was a category over here in the attribute table called uh, income GRP? Uh, this is not simple numbers, but there is a limited number of different categories five altogether. So they've used some kind of income distribution categorization system that we can also show not as a graduated symbol map, but as a categorized symbol. If we choose that in the properties and go down to income GRP and choose a color ramp, let's say by greens, and classify, you'll see that it's given us uh, six different categories. Uh, one for empty, I guess. Let's turn that one off. Uh, and now it'll show rich countries or those countries with high incomes with a lighter color. To reverse that, we can click on the color ramp and choose invert color ramp. And now it'll have the darker colors for the high income. Pressing apply and OK, we get uh, uh, a somewhat nicer division uh, in terms of, uh, in some things, notice that Saudi Arabia has a lighter color now uh, for some reason. Uh, but at any rate, that is another option when you have a very limited number of different categories in your data uh, rather than a large range of numbers. Okay, our second task is, let's turn off the countries for a second, or actually we, we lose all the coastlines that way. Let's turn on uh, populated places. Then I'm going to zoom in, uh, let's see, just on uh, the Philippines. And uh, again, if we wanted to label those cities, we could go into properties, uh, click labels, single labels, press okay. There are a lot of cities. Oh, notice that I doesn't show anything because I didn't tell it what to label it by. I'm going to put name. And here it uh, is a little bit more readable. I could go back and change the label uh, uh, to buffer it, to offset it a little bit more, uh, to make it look nicer, uh, and so on. Uh, but another nice thing about uh, graduated symbol maps is uh, you can do, let's turn off the labels for a second. In this case, a graduated symbol is going to change, we can have it change the style, uh, the size of uh, the dot. Uh, we could have done it by color like we did with countries. So I could have, for example, what kinds of columns do we have to play with? Uh, if there's a population uh, here, I could do it by color, just like we did with country. And I didn't classify it. Classify and press OK. And now it will not very helpfully color the different cities, uh, different colors. But a more useful way to do this is to go into the properties and choose size instead. Choosing quantiles and classify. And you'll see here that it's giving us four different sized circles depending on the population of uh, the city. Press apply. And uh, I can change the, uh, the color if I wanted to. Let's change the symbol's color to uh, black, for example. And uh, now it creates sizes uh, depending on uh, the population. We could label that in this case instead of 
labeling it by name, we could give it the label by the actual population or whatever pop min means in this case. I'm going to place it offset from the point a bit to make it a little bit reader readable. And uh, I would probably continue to fiddle with this because it looks like the larger circles still get it to, to, to uh, overlap. Um, but anyways, now you can see that uh, we've done a couple of different things. We create a, a choropleth map, both with graduated symbols, with categorized symbols. We've done uh, graduated symbols for population um, numbers. And um, we've learned how to change the mode of the classification um, to label things and offset them. Uh, these are some of the most basic kinds of tasks uh, that you'll uh, want to do with uh, your layers in QGIS.